small sect with tribulation crossing experts would be troubled by a third-rate force. They even boast about wiping out our small sect. At this moment, everyone in the hall was baffled. Mirror Moon Manor, Chu Hongshan and Old Xia each brought a furnace cauldron out. How dare they recklessly talk about wiping out the entire Star Soul sect. What a big mouth they have. Luo Chinshua also had a hostile expression. Everyone, follow me out to meet the enemy. Yi Feng reminded, Master, you forgot your cauldron. The image just established was again ruined by Yi Feng. Just stop mentioning your broken cauldron. At this time, people from Mirror Moon Manor still hadn't realized what kind of sect they had provoked. Their subordinate even suggested, why not just wipe out this sect? Zhang Shufeng said cruelly, no hurry, I won't let a single person from this sect escape. I want them to die in fear. Just then, Old Xia and others each came out with a cauldron. This action was instantly ridiculed by people from Mirror Moon Manor. Are all the people in this broken sect lunatics? Dragging a big cauldron each, Luo Chenshua was mortified seeing this, wishing she hadn't agreed to Yi Feng's request to bring the cauldron into battle. Zhang Shufeng told them to stop laughing, vaguely feeling something was amiss. These old men's auras seemed very strong. Zhang Shufeng, today, no matter why you came, provoking the Star Soul Sect is a dead end. Even Shi Chenfeng couldn't save you. Zhang Shufeng grew more uneasy upon hearing this. Who exactly are you? Chu Hongshan then stated his name. Even Shi Chenfeng owes me three favors. Today, no one will be of use. I said it. Upon hearing the opponent's name, Zhang Shufeng was instantly dumbfounded. How could it be him? Isn't it said that he wouldn't join any forces? Then he let old Chu listen to his explanation. Chu Hongshan told him to get to the point quickly. Zhang Shufeng hurriedly explained that his son was killed, so he thought of taking revenge. He used the mother and child bug to trace the murderer here. Chu Hongshan burst into laughter. Who are you fooling? Even if you're making excuses, find a better one. Your useless son had a protector, and my star soul sex only two disciples. One at the merging spirit realm peak, the other at the foundation realm peak. How could they kill your son? Zhang Shufeng acknowledged the logic, but the source of the mother and child bug really was here. Chu Hongshan told Zhang Shufeng to stop pretending, not thinking he didn't know what Mirror Moon Manor was like. Then he turned to ask, did anyone kill his son? Everyone shook their heads in unison, not knowing anything about his son. Seeing this scene, Zhang Shufeng became anxious, claiming they were lying. Luo Chenshua couldn't be bothered to argue with him, directly signaling everyone to take action. At this moment, people from Mirror Moon Manor realized that all those old men were tribulation crossing experts. The next second, they were greeted by the large cauldrons. Luo Kai was very satisfied with this. Using the big cauldron felt damn good. Then he saw old Bai and old Xia, with their astonishing strength, swinging the big cauldrons around. They even mocked Luo Kai. Don't think you're amazing just because you're a body cultivator. Luo Chinshua, although still feeling embarrassed seeing this, was actually quite satisfied inside, realizing how enjoyable it is to smash people with a cauldron used for alchemy. She then imagined herself fighting in the future, a beautiful woman wielding a big cauldron to smash people. Luo Chinshua decided to discard this impractical idea, better not, to avoid being labeled a violent gorilla. Yi Feng then wondered, did these people really come to avenge a murder? Luo Chinshua didn't think so, it was just a ridiculous excuse. At that time, the entire sky was filled with red blood rain. Yi Feng, seeing this, didn't want to overthink, seeming unrelated to him. However, at that moment, the system spoke, urging Yi Feng to use Heaven's Secret to check if the incident of the Divine Tycoon's guard in the cave was related to him. Yi Feng was annoyed. Why check? You've already hinted. Isn't it just saying it's related to me? The battle in the sky ended, with Chu Hongshan's strike crushing Zhang Shu Feng. Yi Feng then approached Luo Chinshua. Master, about that, seems like I killed his son. Luo Chinshua was completely unsettled. What? You really killed his son? So, others were not provoking without a reason. They truly came for revenge. How did you kill him? Yi Feng awkwardly explained. I took a nap, and his son was killed by me. At this time, the elders returned with only half of Zhang Shufeng's body. Sect Master, all is settled. Mirror Moon Manor was no good either. We've done justice by punishing evil. Old Xia suggested visiting Mirror Moon Manor in a couple of days to eradicate them completely. Luo Chenshua was speechless at this moment. Yi Feng asked her what was wrong. Luo Chenshua was stunned, killed someone's son, and massacred their sect. Now the elders are planning to uproot them. The once good reputation of our Star Soul sect is gone. After this battle, the Star Soul sect will definitely be labeled a demonic sect. And she, Luo Chenshua, the sect leader of the Star Soul sect, will be seen as a female demon. Yi Feng was speechless. The system, how could you portray my sect like this? The system then changed its tune. After this battle, the Star Soul sect eradicated a major scourge for the cultivation world. Everyone praised it. Yi Feng told it to shut up. Are you narrating a story here? Luo Chenshua felt helpless, being a master without a sense of achievement, and a sect leader with frustration. Yi Feng then remembered the Secret Realm sect competition, asking when it starts. Luo Chenshua said it starts in seven days. Take the cultivation resources with you. Go there a day early with your brothers. Also, choose an elder to lead the team. I won't go. Yi Feng didn't quite understand. This beautiful master seems to really dislike trouble. What exactly is the important matter she is dealing with? To investigate master's secret, Yi Feng decided to use the Heaven's Secret function. The system reminded that due to the large amount of target information, using
using Heaven's Secret this time, will consume all three chances for today. Yi Feng was quite surprised, but still used it, only then uncovering the backstory of the beautiful master. It turns out Luo Chenshua was the saintess of Celestial Heights Boundless Sanctuary, attacked by the Void Sword sect, the Legion Isle of Penglai, and Heavenly Martial sect during her external training. Fortunately, she preserved her soul with a secret treasure, and reincarnated into the current Luo Chenshua. Her only goal is to accelerate her cultivation, and ascend to the Celestial Heights for revenge. Yi Feng was initially not too surprised by this, but the system playfully said Luo Chenshua had a Tao companion. That made Yi Feng lose his composure. What did you say? Fortunately, it was just the system joking. Luo Chenshua, in any life, never had a Tao companion. Yi Feng was speechless. Damn, the system dares to scare me. I just wanted to know what Master is busy with. Just say she's cultivating. Why mention a large amount of information? But thinking about Master's tragic past life, Yi Feng felt a bit sad. He remembered those three forces targeting Master. Someday, he will ascend to the Celestial Heights with the Star Soul Sect and kill all those who bully my wife. Ding, congratulations to the host for confirming a Tao companion. Reward, 100 million marrow cleansing elixirs. An unranked elixir completely removes impurities from the body, achieving a truly pure spirit body. Any clear mysterious pill is inferior in its presence. The only downside is that a single pill has weak effects, requires large quantities to be effective, and the taste is a bit off. Yi Feng complained, isn't your reward a bit late? I already determined my Tao companion. Now you give this, the system weakly said. Next time you have a Tao companion, I'll give it earlier. Yi Feng kicked it away with one foot. What are you thinking? I only have master in my heart. Then, looking at the marrow cleansing elixir, the first thing Yi Feng thought of was giving it to the dog. If Wu Feng were here, he would definitely cry to death. I am your junior brother, you know. How come I have less presence than a dog? Regarding the arrangement of the marrow cleansing elixir, Yi Feng decided not to waste it. Instead, he planned to give it to master and the others. Just then, Yi Feng saw little blood passing by, and then tore up little blood's clothes. His idea was actually to use the clothes to hold the elixirs. Little blood was stunned. Why didn't you tear up those old guys' clothes? Yi Feng said their clothes were too smelly. Little Blood was angry but couldn't argue. That was her two million top grade spirit stone worth of clothes. She wouldn't even damage them a bit during fights, but now they were torn up by her master. Later, Yi Feng found the elders and took out a bunch of marrow cleansing elixir for them. Newcomers Chu Hongshan and Luo Kai didn't know. Painful experience was coming. Old Bai and Old Xia, having experienced the pain of consuming pills, knew what was up seeing the pile. Then, Yi Feng looked at the system. All of today's squandering products were used up. Why haven't the rewards been issued yet? The system reminded the host that there's still one furnace cauldron not used. Almost forgotten. Just squandering a furnace cauldron. Then Yi Feng was seen leaving with a heavenly tier furnace cauldron. The elders were puzzled. What was Yi Feng planning to do? A moment later, Yi Feng arrived in front of Zhang Shufeng's body and smashed it hard with the cauldron, blaming this old guy for wasting his squandering time. The elders were frightened, seeing Yi Feng angry for the first time, wondering if it was because they ate too slowly. Chu Hongshan, upon hearing this, thought of the previous incident with Yi Feng's divine tycoon's gar. Then, the elders, regardless of the taste, to avoid making Yi Feng angry, desperately started eating, while Yi Feng, just after using up the furnace cauldron, was notified that the squandering was complete, rewarding 1,000 squandering points in a twilight mystic robe. Yi Feng grinned. This robe is obviously prepared for master. The system also introduced the robe, a lady's garment made from twilight mystic crystals, warm in winter, cool in summer, soft and comfortable, and with unbreakable defense. Yi Feng, seeing this, had a nosebleed. He must hurry to deliver it to master. The system, seeing this, also issued a task. Deliver the twilight mystic robe to master. Master Luo Chenjue. Successful delivery will be rewarded with 500,000 squandering points. Yi Feng was astonished. Can't believe there are so many squandering points. System, are you deliberately messing with me? The system stated it's for your own good, to help you lead a life without shame or impatience. Yi Feng hesitated a bit. To do or not to do? After all, she's still only master, not yet a wife. While Yi Feng was pondering whether to accept the task, Luo Chenjue just happened to appear nearby. Yi Feng, what are you doing? Without much thought, Yi Feng blurted out, Wife, why are you back again? Luo Chen Chenshua was taken aback. What did you say? The elders also heard this, all looking at Yi Feng in astonishment. Luo Chenshua glared at Yi Feng with a dark expression. Who did you just call wife? Yi Feng, trembling, explained it was just a misunderstanding. Luo Chenshua calmly said, Are you sure it's a misunderstanding? As she emitted a powerful aura, Yi Feng started sweating profusely. Master, listen to my explanation. The elders, while taking their medicine, gossiped. This young man Yi Feng has potential. He really dares to call her that. When did he win over the sect leader? But seeing Luo Chenshua's cold gaze, the elders didn't dare to say more. To avoid bringing trouble upon themselves, Luo Chenshua asked coldly, Yi Feng, since you say it's a misunderstanding, then explain to me, what is that thing in your hand? Yi Feng awkwardly said, Wife, this thing. Luo Chenshua was exasperated. You're still calling wife? Yi Feng could only seriously explain to her, this is a garment made from twilight mystic crystal, having very strong defensive capabilities. Luo Chenshua was somewhat skeptical. Twilight mystic crystal is extremely rare. Even Boundless Sanctuary has only one 
piece. But upon sensing the aura emanating from the garment, Luo Chinchua was utterly amazed. It really is the aura of Twilight Mystic Crystal. Knowing how rare the crystal is, could it be that Yifeng is the reincarnation of a Celestial Heights Superior Force's Holy Son? Luo Chinchua was now very tempted, torn between embarrassment and the precious Twilight Mystic Crystal. Eventually, the Twilight Mystic Crystal won over her embarrassment. She decided to accept the garment, but also warned Yifeng not to call her wife again in the future. Hearing this, Yifeng grinned mischievously. Master eventually gave in. It seems the Mystic Crystal really is a good thing. Should I pursue the victory? Then, he grabbed Luo Chanchua's hand and said, From now on, we'll each say our own. I'll call you wife, and you can call me whatever you want. Luo Chanchua, blushing, said that's not okay. If you dare call me wife again, I'll strip you of your position as the direct disciple. Yifeng then brought up his honorary elder status to order her not to strip him of his direct disciple position. Luo Chanchua pouted, feeling sullen. You dare to threaten me? Seeing the honorary elder status not working, Yifeng then invoked his grandmaster status. Eventually, Luo Chanchua admitted defeat. Fine, whatever. Call me whatever you want. And then she left with a red face. Yifeng was extremely happy. Indeed, being thick-skinned is key to winning over a wife. Just one twilight mystic crystal, and she lets me call her wife. Maybe next time I could even get a kiss. And the time after that, maybe even enter the bridal chamber. Yifeng chuckled foolishly. Just then, Yifeng suddenly remembered. Where did the marrow cleansing elixir and the elders go? Later, Yifeng went to the disciple courtyard, telling junior brother Wufeng to go to the sex main hall. There's something good for him, but he was confused as soon as he entered. Why are all the senior brothers here? The next second, junior brother Wufeng directly knelt down, startling Yifeng. Junior brother, what are you doing? Wufeng then started to cry. Eldest brother, it was my narrow-mindedness. Yifeng, puzzled, looked at junior brother Wufeng. What's going on with you? Wufeng, like a clown, said about himself. When you, senior brother, spent a hundred thousand high-grade spiritual stones to become master's direct disciple, I thought you were just a fool with too much money. But it turns out, I was the fool. At this time, the core disciples also gathered around. It has to be you, junior brother. A hundred thousand high-grade spiritual stones to get a saintess as a wife. Only you could win over the ice goddess of the star extreme sect. Yifeng then realized his calling master wife has been exposed. Du Tianyu enviously said, never thought the story of a domineering disciple falling for a cold master would be true. Upon hearing this, the brothers all wanted her book to learn a thing or two. Then the brothers headed to the sex main hall. Yifeng with a dark face, wondered which elder let it slip. They're definitely going to overeat marrow cleansing elixir later. Right after Yifeng arrived at the sex main hall, Chu Xiao Xiao frantically looked at him. Yifeng, what have you done to my sister Luo Chen Chua? But was stopped by Chu Hong Shan. Yifeng was very smug. Just say what you want directly. I'm very happy now. I don't want your stuff. I, Chu Xiao Xiao, would rather starve to death or be struck down by heavenly thunder than accept anything from you. Yifeng found her quite uninteresting. This woman is much more irritable than master. After saying this, he saw the beautiful master sitting in the main seat. Yifeng chuckled, still maintaining your dignity. Ha, huh? wife, you must be angry now. But after ascending, when you face danger, I'll perform a miraculous descent, arriving with the star soul sect to rescue you and win your heart. Then, he tore Little Blood's clothes again. Little Blood was exasperated. My new clothes, again. Master, can't you find another scapegoat? I hardly have any clothes left. Yifeng ignored her and introduced the pile of marrow cleansing elixir on the table. This medicine is much more powerful than clear mysterious pills. It can truly give you a spirit body without impurities. Seeing food, the dog eagerly came over. Yifeng kicked it away. Get out of here, you stupid dog. You'll eat last. Everyone found this scene quite satisfying, thinking the better treated than human series has finally ended. Chu Xiao Xiao then advised Luo Chinchua, we mustn't eat it. But Luo Chinchua expressed her temptation. It's the lure of a spirit body without impurities. My only goal is to become stronger. I can't refuse what he offers. Chu Xiao Xiao was furious. She didn't believe the pills Yifeng offered could be so amazing, and decisively tasted one. Yifeng was smug, thinking her arrogance has been silenced. But Chu Xiao Xiao immediately vomited after eating. It's so disgusting, like some kind of poison. Yifeng was puzzled. Is it really that bad? And decisively fed some marrow cleansing elixir to the dog to test. After eating, the dog also had a constipated face, and then started vomiting crazily, even becoming stiff. Yifeng cheered it on, but seeing the dog lying stiff, Yifeng wondered if it was playing dead. Then he fed it more marrow cleansing elixir. Everyone was surprised to see the dog's day had come. That's how it should be treated. Too much pampering of the dog. So, Yifeng fed the dog marrow cleansing elixir for half an hour, making it as fat as a pig. Yifeng told it not to be ungrateful. If it weren't for wanting to train this stupid dog, it wouldn't have gotten any of these good things. At this time, Yifeng asked the system, everyone's physique is different. How do we determine how many marrow cleansing elixirs they need to achieve a pure, impurity-free physique? However, the system stated that all beings are equal. Just consume 100,000 pills per person, and you can achieve a pure, impurity-free physique. Yifeng was almost frightened. Are you sure 100,000 won't kill them? At this time, Chu Hongshan was crying while pinching his granddaughter's acupoint. He and Chu Xiaoxiao had already consumed hundreds of pills. Why
why aren't there significant changes in their bodies? How many more do they need to eat? Yi Feng awkwardly said it might take 100,000. Upon hearing this, Chu Xiao Xiao couldn't bother feigning unconsciousness anymore. What? 100,000 pills? Not only were the grandfather and granddaughter shocked, everyone was stunned by Yi Feng's words. Yi Feng, blushing, explained, anyone who consumes 100,000 pills can achieve a pure, impurity-free physique. The core disciples wailed. They couldn't eat so many. It was simply unbearable, and the taste was absolutely worse than excrement. However, Luo Chanshua didn't think so. As a saint is from celestial heights, she knew how powerful a pure physique was. Now, just by eating 100,000 pills, she could achieve it. It was a huge bargain. Once ascended to celestial heights, the power of a pure physique would be revealed. At this moment, Chu Xiao Xiao completely broke down. Can we not eat anymore? After eating, her pure heart felt polluted by filth. Having her consume 100,000 such disgusting pills was worse than killing her. Yi Feng remarked that the young people today just can't handle it. Then he tried one himself. The next second, he started vomiting violently. He thinks this thing tastes even worse than shit, though he's never actually eaten shit. System, are you sure this is just slightly bad in taste? This is clearly no different from eating excrement. They managed to persist through hundreds of pills already. Maybe it's better to save the marrow cleansing elixirs for squandering. The system reminded that the benefits of a pure physique in celestial heights are terrifying. Please decide carefully. Yi Feng was startled. It seems this pill, comparable to excrement, must be consumed. Seeing Yi Feng also struggling to eat, Chu Hongshan tried to console him. Forget it. 100,000 is really unbearable. Yi Feng asked everyone, do you really not want to eat anymore? Getting affirmative answers from everyone that they didn't want to eat, Yi Feng started to act serious. All right, but let me say something first. To persuade Chu Hongshan to voluntarily eat marrow cleansing elixirs, Yi Feng brought up the one-armed madman, the member of Divine Tycoon's Guard, who utterly defeated Chu Hongshan the other day, saying if they eat one less pill, the one-armed madman will appear once. What the one-armed man would do, Yi Feng isn't sure. He can only guarantee that Elder Chu stays alive. Upon hearing this, Chu Hongshan had no choice but to eat, obediently accepting the marrow cleansing elixir from Yi Feng. Luo Chinchua was a bit bewildered. Who is this one-armed madman? What surprised her even more was that her good friend Chu Xiao Xiao also started frantically eating the marrow cleansing elixirs. She didn't understand. Is the one-armed man Yi Feng mentioned really that terrifying? At this time, only Chu Hongshan, his granddaughter, and little blood were eating. Old Bai and Old Xia urged them not to focus only on eating, wondering who exactly is this one-armed man, making them all so anxious. Knowing that the sex strongest, Little Blood and Chu Hongshan, are this scared, they had no power to refute, so they had no choice but to start eating too. After half a day of eating, Chu Hongshan, who couldn't eat anymore, came to chat. Apparently, after killing Zhang Shu Feng, he feared Shi Chen Feng might cause trouble. Yi Feng wondered, doesn't Shi Chen Feng owe you three favors? Chu Hongshan explained that favors are only useful when there's no conflict. Now that he has killed Shi Chen Feng's man, he feared Shi Chen Feng might turn hostile. At this moment, the system also issued a task, ordering Yi Feng to lead 10,000 reserve members of Divine Tycoon's Guard to annihilate Shi Chen Feng's dark sorcery set, rewarding 300,000 squandering points. Yi Feng then remembered what the Golden Armor Guard and the One-Armed Man said. The Golden Armor Guard said there were thousands of Divine Tycoon's Guards, but the One-Armed Man said there were only 10. Turns out the Golden Armor Guard is one of the reserves. The Golden Armor is a symbol of their reserve status. When they take off the Golden Armor, they can become official members of the Divine Tycoon's Guard. Yi Feng was a bit surprised. So, the One-Armed Man is really strong, but Yi Feng thought of the key point. So the first time I encounter danger, you just send a reserve to me, system? The system said it was a random draw. Anyway, in mysterious heaven continent, the reserves are just overkill. Yi Feng was speechless. You really don't care about my life, ha? Huh? Even doing a random draw, forget it. He couldn't be bothered to argue. Now he still has about 600,000 squandering points. Just need another 300,000, and he can break through. But is this dark sorcery sect so strong, needing 10,000 reserves to annihilate it? The system said he was overthinking. It's just that the reserves have been training for a long time, and need to come out for some fresh air. But Yi Feng is going to the Mystic Realm Grand Tournament in seven days. Is there enough time? The system assured that there's no problem. After annihilating them, let the guards tear through space. Just send you to the Mystic Realm Grand Tournament's secret realm. Yi Feng thought it was a great idea. He could sneak in and destroy all the resources, leaving just a little bit for others, making everyone else come in second. Thinking of this, Yi Feng subconsciously called out to Luo Chinchue again. Wife, Luo Chinchue immediately pulled out her long sword in threat. Call me that one more time and see what happens. Yi Feng quickly changed his tone. Master, I want to go out with Elder Chu for a bit. Luo Chinchua then let him go and agreed to his request. Yi Feng felt a bit gloomy. Master, aren't you worried about me encountering danger outside? Luo Chinchua scoffed. Why should I, a junior, worry about a grandmaster going out on a mission? Before leaving, Yi Feng distributed storage rings to everyone, each containing 100,000 marrow cleansing elixirs, allowing everyone to eat at their leisure. Little Blood was exasperated. You have storage rings, so why tear up my clothes? Then Yi Feng informed everyone about his departure and called Chu Hongshan a 
along. Now everyone was thrilled. No need to rush eating those excrement tasting pills for a few days. Outside the main hall, Yi Feng looked at Chu Hongshan's spiritual artifact with curiosity. What is this thing? Chu Hongshan explained that it's a flying spiritual artifact, powered by spiritual stones for limitless flight. Yi Feng thought it was fantastic. He was just worrying about where to spend his spiritual stone. He could supply the spiritual stones. With this, he wouldn't even need to learn flying sword techniques. But Chu Hongshan said the spiritual artifact was only third grade. Its speed was similar to the peak of merging spirit realm. Good for sightseeing on trips. Yi Feng thought the speed was too slow. Can it reach the dark sorcery sect in seven days? Chu Hongshan was surprised to hear this. Are you going to find Sir Chen Feng at the dark sorcery sect? Yi Feng told him not to worry about why they were going. Just asked if they could reach the dark sorcery sect in seven days. Chu Hongshan said the soul artifact definitely couldn't, unless he flew there himself. Yi Feng then had an idea, so he arranged for Chu Hongshan to fly behind, pushing the flying soul artifact. While he enjoyed a speed like light, Chu Hongshan never thought he'd become a human booster one day. Approaching nightfall, Yi Feng suggested finding a town to rest. Then they settled in a nearby town. Chu Hongshan found it unavoidable. Even on a trip, Yi Feng still reminded him to eat marrow cleansing elixirs. Yi Feng, strolling around, suddenly thought of his eldest disciple and his master's sister. He needed to send them the marrow cleansing elixirs. Otherwise, he'd be an incompetent master. Then he activated the sex teleportation, targeting Hua Yumin. As a spatial vortex appeared, Yi Feng arrived beside Hua Yumin. The person was in the middle of bathing. Yi Feng felt a bit awkward. Eldest disciple, why don't you turn around? Let your master help you scrub your back. Frightened, Hua Yumin kicked over. Go to hell, you lecher. At this moment, Yi Feng's perspective was like time had stopped. He saw everything clearly, what he should and shouldn't have seen, causing him to have a nosebleed. He never expected his first benefit to come from his eldest disciple Hua Yumin. Just as Hua Yumin was about to kick Yi Feng, the one-armed man from Divine Tycoon's guard appeared. Of course, he couldn't let him see the scene, taking advantage of him not fully emerging from the spatial rift. Yi Feng fiercely kicked him back. Yi Feng was speechless about the one-armed man, always ruining his good moments. The next second, Hua Yumin's foot kicked towards his face, knocking him unconscious. After recognizing Yi Feng, Hua Yumin also felt a bit embarrassed. Next time, Master, could you notify me before coming? Then she asked, Master, do you have something important since you came suddenly? Yi Feng then took out a storage ring containing 200,000 marrow cleansing elixirs, allowing her and Luo Yao Yao to each consume 100,000 to achieve a pure, impurity-free spirit body. Just that the marrow cleansing elixirs are a bit smelly, you have to bear with it, not even one less. It's very useful in celestial heights. Though Hua Yumin was a bit confused, she still accepted it and promised to follow the instruction. Having said that, Yi Feng prepared to leave. Before leaving, he reminded Hua Yumin not to associate with the dark sorcery sect. They are destined to perish. Upon hearing that Master was going to annihilate the dark sorcery sect, Hua Yumin immediately informed Luo Yao Yao, ordering her to eliminate the people from dark sorcery sect who came to buy supplies and to come to her room for a chat. Soon after, Luo Yao Yao also came over. Hua Yumin then handed the marrow cleansing elixirs to her. Luo Yao Yao didn't recognize the pills, but trusted her master, Hua Yumin, and tried one. The next second, her entire facial features blurred. Then she fainted and fell backwards. Hua Yumin was dumbfounded. Luo Yao Yao, you're not dead, are you? Luo Yao Yao sighed and said, Master, did I offend you in some way? If you want me dead, just give me a quick end. Hua Yumin felt fortunate that she let Luo Yao Yao try it first. Otherwise, her image as the Valley Master of 10,000 Flower Valley would have been ruined. Luo Yao Yao was extremely weak. Master, what's wrong? Is someone threatening you? If so, just tell your disciple. Hua Yumin told her not to guess wildly. Just know that these pills are beneficial. They were sent by Yi Feng. Here are 200,000 of them. You and I each have to consume 100,000. Luo Yao Yao immediately became furious. What? 100,000 pills? You and Grandmaster are trying to kill me, aren't you? Luo Yao Yao couldn't understand at all. Are these really beneficial? She decided to consult her sister. After contacting Luo Chinchue, Luo Chinchue was eating marrow cleansing elixirs and vomiting while talking to her. Luo Yao Yao could already picture the scene. It seems even her sister couldn't avoid it. In that case, Master, let's eat them. The next morning, Yi Feng woke up in a good mood. Today is squandering item also refreshed. It's fragments of artifice enlightenment, 10,000 pieces. After use, it greatly enhances the ability to perceive the path of the artificer, allowing the creation of soul artifacts with low-level artifact spirits. Yi Feng was quite surprised. Can it really create artifact spirits? This isn't something that can be done in the lower realms. But how should he squander them? At this moment, Chu Hongshan came to him. Seeing his worried look, he asked what was wrong. Old Bai had informed him that Yi Feng squanders something every day, wondering what he would squander today. Yi Feng then asked Chu Hongshan, Elder Chu, as a refiner, do you pursue the highest realm of the path of the artificer? Chu Hongshan said it was almost enough for him. Ever since he had the heavenly tier furnace cauldron, he had been too lazy to pursue further. Hearing this, Yi Feng smirked. So, Elder Chu, you've given up. Chu Hongshan felt a bit uneasy under his gaze. Getting affirmation, Yi Feng decided to give him the path of the artificer fragments. Seeing the fragments in Yi Feng's hand, Chu Hongshan was extremely surprised. He 
recognized them as path of the artificer fragments, and told Yi Feng not to waste them on him. He had already given up on pursuing the highest realm of refining. Yi Feng said that was exactly what he wanted, someone with the right fate like him. If he hadn't given up, Yi Feng wouldn't have given them to him. At this point, Chu Hongshan also realized, so, you are squandering on me. That's right, after Elder Chu consumes 10,000 fragments, you can create an artifact spirit. Then, the pots and pans in the sect will rely on you. Chu Hongshan felt it was a waste of talent. If he had to refine those, he would rather not consume the fragments. Yi Feng grinned, having a plan in mind. He gestured with his right hand as if holding a sword, swinging towards his own left arm, muttering, should I cut off this left hand and practice swordsmanship instead? Chu Hongshan then realized, Yi Feng was using the one-armed man to threaten him. The next second, he admitted defeat. Actually, I think pots and pans with artifact spirits are quite interesting. Yi Feng appeared pleased, as if to say, the child can be taught. After consuming 10,000 fragments, Chu Hongshan resumed the journey with Yi Feng. He was a bit puzzled, although he could now refine spiritual artifacts with artifact spirits. Creating an artifact spirit would trigger an artifact tribulation, and he couldn't withstand it. Yi Feng assured him not to worry, saying he would help him block the artifact tribulation. Anyway, that one-armed madman was quite strong. Chu Hongshan, however, thought it was inappropriate. If someone else blocks the thunder tribulation for an artifact spirit, it would bring about the true thunder tribulation, a tribulation that no one can withstand. Yi Feng was full of confidence, saying no matter what tribulation, it would not be a big problem for the one-armed man. Even the heavenly Tao wouldn't dare to fart in his presence. Chu Hongshan was immensely shocked upon hearing this. Although Yi Feng was known for his extravagance, he never bragged. Having a guard capable of contending with the heavenly Tao, what exactly is Yi Feng's identity? At that moment, Yi Feng noticed a skirmish not far away, and asked Elder Chu to stop. Below, three people were being attacked by a group of beasts. Chu Hongshan recognized their clothes. They were inner disciples of the dark sorcery sect, probably unable to defeat the frost mystic wolves. Yi Feng asked about their strength. Chu Hongshan assessed, including the beasts. They were all at the peak of the foundation realm. Yi Feng seemed eager to act, seeing a chance to try out his newly acquired good and evil Buddha mystic prowess. Chu Hongshan was somewhat surprised. Was this extravagant young man finally going to make a move? He had only heard others say that Yi Feng was strong. Today, he would finally see it for himself. Meanwhile, the dark sorcery sect disciples were desperately resisting the frost mystic wolves, but all harboring their own ulterior motives, refusing to reveal their trump cards, especially a disciple named Xia Hai, who had many secrets but was unwilling to use them. At the critical moment, Yi Feng descended, urging the three to retreat, saying he would handle the five frost mystic wolves. The next second, a lightning fast figure landed. Then Yi Feng decisively used the good and evil Buddha. A vision of Buddha and demon appeared. As Yi Feng commanded, the evil side emitted a purple light, instantly causing the frost mystic wolves to start attacking each other. The nearby dark sorcery sect disciples were stunned, terrified by the power of the mystic prowess, too scared to stay there any longer. But Yi Feng coldly said, who allowed you to leave? In a flash, the Buddha side emitted a dazzling golden light, purifying the three disciples. The three of them murmured to themselves that they deserved to die as such degenerates. Then they committed suicide to atone for their sins. Chu Hongshan, who was watching from above, was somewhat shocked. This mystic prowess is indeed terrifying. He almost got affected himself, urgently asking Yi Feng to withdraw the mystic prowess. Yi Feng complied upon hearing this. Old Chu, were you also affected? Chu Hongshan, looking at the three who committed suicide. Yi Feng, it seems you don't fully understand your mystic prowess. Yi Feng admitted he indeed didn't understand it, as it was his first time using it. Chu Hongshan's face showed immense shock. For the first time in his life, he saw a mystic prowess that defied the laws of the heavenly Tao. He surmised from the earlier performance that the mystic prowess causes the good to turn evil, losing their sanity and attacking each other, and the evil to turn good, similarly losing their sanity and committing suicide. Just then, the system alerted to the presence of heavenly Tao tokens. Yi Feng was overjoyed, wondering if these people came from the heavenly Tao battlefield. This was an unexpected delight. Yi Feng happily obtained two heavenly Tao tokens. With these two, he could take his beautiful wife to heavenly Tao city for fun. Chu Hongshan, unaware of the purpose of these tokens, asked Yi Feng what they were. Yi Feng explained, they are unique tokens from the heavenly Tao battlefield. With these two heavenly Tao tokens, Yi Feng lost interest in other things, leaving behind a pile of spiritual stones and treasures. Chu Hongshan was a bit speechless. Have spiritual stones and treasures become synonymous with trash now? Then the two continued on their journey. During a break, Chu Hongshan inquired of Yi Feng, besides the good and evil Buddha, did he have any other trump cards? Yi Feng thought for a moment and replied, does his sword heart realm's death sword intent count? Chu Hongshan was shocked. You're also a sword cultivator. Yi Feng said no. He is merely a transporter of sword intent, feeding himself into the realm of sword heart. Actually, compared to being a sword cultivator himself, he was more keen on feeding a sword dog. After all, even dog reached the sword heart realm, making it mysterious heaven continent's first sword dog. Chu Hongshan was hearing this for the first time and was instantly stunned, almost causing Yi Feng to crash. Chu Hongshan still couldn't believe it. Damn it, even dogs can break through the sword heart realm. Why haven't I broken through with
with 10,000 fragments. Is my comprehension worse than a dog's? Just then, Chu Hongshan's token rang. It was Shi Chen Feng contacting him. Yi Feng told him to tell Shi Chen Feng to wash his neck and wait. In six days, he would wipe out his dark sorcery sect. Meanwhile, inside the dark sorcery sect's main hall, hearing Chu Hongshan's words about destroying the dark sorcery sect, sect master Shi Chen Feng was furious. A mere old codger dares to challenge me. He immediately ordered all followers to return. He wanted to see how Chu Hongshan would destroy the dark sorcery sect. Meanwhile, in the heavenly secrets pavilion, great elder Sun Li was startled. He had already deduced that in six days, the dark sorcery sect would be completely annihilated. Shou Tong was surprised. What about the secret treasure of our heavenly secrets pavilion? It turns out that the old sect master of the dark sorcery sect, Zhou Chongshan, had borrowed their heavenly secrets pavilion's secret treasure at a great cost. Now the deadline has not yet arrived, but they can't afford not to take it back. At this moment, Yi Feng's second disciple of the prodigal sect, Yi Ling Xue, walked in. Is this the elder of the heavenly secrets pavilion? Having been here for so long, she always felt that great elder didn't pay enough attention to her. Even other disciples of the heavenly secrets pavilion couldn't stand it anymore. Ever since Yi Ling Xue came to the heavenly secrets pavilion, all the resources have been hers. All the elders doted on her. She was almost pampered like the grandmother of the heavenly secrets pavilion. And still not enough attention, great elder Sun Li decided they must retrieve the secret treasure from the dark sorcery sect within six days. Even if it damages the reputation of the heavenly secrets pavilion, then he prepared to use the celestial peering telescope to deduce who would be best to retrieve the secret treasure. Upon hearing this, Yi Ling Xue realized this is one of the three great secret treasures of the heavenly secrets pavilion. They say even peeking once would shorten one's life by several years. Not wanting great elder to suffer, Yi Ling Xue volunteered to try operating the celestial peering telescope herself. Of course, she was just curious and wanted to play with it. Sun Li told her not to be reckless. She is the future of the heavenly secrets pavilion and can't afford to lose anything. Yi Ling Xue then revealed her possession of karma Dao patterns to everyone. Sun Li was incredibly astonished. You actually have karma Dao patterns. Let me see how much karmic force this karma Dao patterns can withstand. As the great elder approached, Yi Ling Xue slapped him. You old geezer, don't you know that men and women shouldn't touch each other? Knocking out another one of Sun Li's few remaining teeth, Yi Ling Xue asked doubtfully, is this karma Dao patterns not so good? Who would have thought Sun Li would cry with envy? You're telling me it's not so good? Do you know how much lifespan and waiting time it costs me to use the celestial peering telescope once? In your karma Dao patterns, even if you use the celestial peering telescope 10 times in a day, it's like playing. No karmic backlash. No need to sacrifice lifespan. Only then did Yi Ling Xue realize how powerful the karma Dao patterns given by her master Yi Feng were. From then on, Sun Li treated Yi Ling Xue even more reverently like an ancestor. Then, looking at the celestial peering telescope, which resembled an astronomical telescope, Yi Ling Xue happily got to try it out. Sun Li was speechless. This was meant for searching, not for playing. Half an hour later, the result was out. The best candidate to go to the dark sorcery sect was indeed Yi Ling Xue. Sun Li then told Zhou Tong to accompany her. Looking at the floor filled with celestial peering telescope records, everyone was extremely surprised. Why was this batch of records so long? Weren't she just checking who was the best candidate to go to the dark sorcery sect? By this time, Sun Li was completely stunned. He had miscalculated. Yi Ling Xue had explored 66 times, most of which weren't serious inquiries. Do you know what she was looking for? Everyone was very curious. What would a saint to search for so many times? Sun Li revealed. She checked our gossip 65 times, leaving no stone unturned about us. People anxiously asked, what did the saintess find out? Sun Li pointed out one by one. One person cheated in marriage 177 times. One son is not his own. The worst is Zhou Tong. He visited brothels 1,095 times in three years. Deceived and bluffed 93 times and has four illegitimate children. That's karma Dao patterns, yet used for such gossip. Truly using a cannon to kill a mosquito. People wore a dejected face. This was a public execution for them. Thankfully Zhou Tong wasn't there. However, when Zhou Tong and Yi Ling Xue were together, Yi Ling Xue exposed all his secrets. Even the genetic reason for Zhou Tong's balding, traced back to his great-great-grandfather, was revealed. Zhou Tong, hearing this wasteful act, couldn't help think of Yi Feng. Why are their behaviors so similar? Suddenly, he realized something. Saintus, do you know someone named Yi Feng? Yi Ling Xue, always playing undercover, naturally wouldn't admit Yi Feng was her master. Zhou Tong then breathed a sigh of relief. Could you don't know him? Meanwhile, Yi Feng received information about Yi Ling Xue's wasteful behavior, earning 800 wasteful points and 200 gold and silkworm star shining stones. This action instantly woke up the drowsy Yi Feng. My second disciple is so promising, even knows how to help her master waste. Yi Feng curiously asked the system, how did Yi Ling Xue waste? The system then informed him of Yi Ling Xue's privacy invasion. Yi Feng applauded her, worthy of the disciple he favored. That's right. Then Yi Feng handed the 200 gold and silkworm star shining stones to Elder Chu. Chu Hongshan was surprised. Is this for me? Yi Feng told him not to overthink it. When you return to the sect, remember to use these star shining stones to build latrines, and then a latrine hut. Chu 
Hongshan was disgruntled, knew this wastrel had no good intentions. Then he scolded, do you know how precious star shining stones are? Day in and day out, all you know is shit, piss, and fart. If you can mention one more thing, I'll consider you creative. In fact, Chu Hongshan wanted to say was why not give them to me? Yi Feng then brought up the great ancestral elders of the star extreme sect. Even they support me. Elder Chu, what's there for you to be angry about? Chu Hongshan didn't believe it. Why would they go crazy with you? He then contacted the ancestral elders. You old geezers, Yi Feng is wasting star shining stones and you're not intervening? But when the ancestral elders explained that the hut built could be used to block thunder tribulations, Chu Hongshan immediately realized his small mindedness. Then he also strongly supported building the hut. Yi Feng was curious. How did you change your attitude so quickly? Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Chenhai Commerce Association, Wang Xiaofei was continuing his training with Butler Meng. Old Meng and Chairman Huang watched. By this time, Old Meng had confirmed the authenticity of the pill formula and praised the young master's thriftiness. Chairman Huang, however, disagreed. Don't you know how wasteful Huang Xiaofei has been since he was young? But Old Meng had witnessed Yi Feng's wastefulness. Chairman, you haven't seen a real wastrel. Do you know what less favored than a dog means? Chairman Huang grew increasingly curious about Yi Feng. He planned to visit the Star Soul sect to see this wastrel. Time passed and another day dawned. A thunderous boom woke up Elder Chu. Could there be a cultivator undergoing tribulation nearby? Upon waking up, Chu Hongshan saw Yi Feng holding several talismans. Curious, he asked Yi Feng what they were. Yi Feng demonstrated by tossing them into the air, releasing massive thunder tribulation attacks. Chu Hongshan was instantly frightened. How can heavenly Dao thunder tribulation be made into talismans? I must be dreaming. I'll continue sleeping. Yi Feng quickly stopped him. Elder Chu, don't go. It's real. Today, we can strut around. Watching the spectacle of the thunder tribulation talismans exploding across the sky, he seriously doubted whether they might accidentally misfire and strike them instead. Yi Feng assured him, the tribulation clouds are under my control, but the next second, a thunder tribulation struck right next to Chu Hongshan. Is this what you meant by not misfiring? At that moment, Heavenly Secrets Pavilion's great elder suddenly spat blood. Shock, he thought. Who could possibly control the Heavenly Dao? Three days later, in the guest room of Dark Sorcery Sect, Shou Tong was advising Yi Ling Xue, we should take the secret treasure and leave. Yi Ling Xue, playing with crickets, said, no rush. When Dark Sorcery Sect's crisis comes, that's when we take the treasure. This she deduced using the Heavenly Mystery Secret Art. Hearing it was indicated by the Heavenly Mystery Secret Art, Shou Tong was no longer in a hurry. Meanwhile, outside the Dark Sorcery Sect, Yi Feng and Elder Chu also arrived. Yi Feng told Elder Chu to look forward to his first transformation. Yi Feng began his transformation moment, surprising Chu Hongshan. You have this ability? Moments later, Yi Feng appeared in new armor, made from the gold and silkworm star shining stones. Chu Hongshan sarcastically said, might as well have used it for latrines. Yi Feng posed coolly, Elder Chu, today I'll show you. Heavenly Dao is nothing. As he called out for the gold and armored guards, numerous spatial rifts appeared in the sky, creating a magnificent scene. Paired with Yi Feng's flamboyant attire, he was the showstopper. Moments later, 10,000 gold and armored guards appeared, all in golden armor. At the Dark Sorcery Sect, they thought someone was undergoing tribulation, but the high ranks of the Dark Sorcery Sect didn't see it that way. An elder was shocked by this aura. Shou Chongshan, the former leader of the Dark Sorcery Sect, appeared. He looked towards the thundering sky in terror. Then he fiercely slapped the approaching Shu Chen Feng. Who exactly have you provoked? Realizing the terrifying aura, he knew Dark Sorcery Sect was doomed. All of us will die today, he lamented. On the other side, beside Yi Feng was the familiar muscular man in golden armor. The golden armored man reported that they could start the plan to destroy the Dark Sorcery Sect. Yi Feng praised him, aiming to be a formal Divine Tycoon's guard soon. Then turned to Elder Chu with a smirk. Why are you dazed? Elder Chu, lead the way. If you have any grudges against Dark Sorcery Sect, seize this opportunity. Chu Hongshan also smirked. Really? Yi Feng affirmed. Whoever you point at, they'll kill. Just enjoy this highlight of your life. Upon seeing the situation, Chu Hongshan was extremely excited. Today, I can finally get my revenge. Meanwhile, Zhou Chongshan prepared for a do-or-die battle, eager to see who could suppress the Heavenly Dao, considering it an honor to die at their hands. As soon as he finished speaking, Yi Feng and Chu Hongshan appeared before him. Without hesitation, Chu Hongshan pointed out those he wanted revenge on, and Divine Tycoon's guard candidates swiftly took action, giving Chu Hongshan a rare thrill, never expecting to one day command such powerful figures. Shou Chongshan, recognizing Chu Hongshan's voice, was stunned. You, old man, this is outrageous. Seeing this, Yi Feng instructed a muscular golden armored man to eliminate him. The man asked how to kill him, leaving Yi Feng momentarily stumped. However you want to kill him, must you ask me? The man looked at the clouds above, suggesting using the Heavenly Dao Thunder Tribulation to annihilate Dark Sorcery Sect. Yi Feng praised the suggestion. Didn't expect you to have such a sly idea. Despite your righteous appearance, I have high hopes for you. But then, a system reminder warned that Yi Feng's disciple, Yi Ling Xue, was visiting Dark Sorcery Sect to be careful not to harm her accidentally. Surprised, Yi Feng assigned some candidates to protect her, then proceeded with the rest. Heavenly Dao Thunder Tribulation struck down on all the evildoers of Dark Sorcery Sect.
sec. Sho Chongshan watched in disbelief, his turn coming the next second. At this moment, inside the guest room of the dark sorcery sect, Yi Ling Xue is leisurely drinking tea. Sho Tong is very concerned about what's happening outside. The saint is even has the mood to drink tea. Well, then, he decides to go out and see. But as soon as he steps out, he witnesses a terrifying scene. Thunder tribulation rains down on the people of the dark sorcery sect. This instantly dissuades Sho Tong from joining the commotion. Yi Ling Xue laughs and says, Older Zhou, not going out anymore? Sho Tong, obviously scared stiff, replies, Not going out anymore. It's safer to stay here. Yi Ling Xue had known about this situation all along. What she couldn't understand was why the celestial peering telescope wanted her to come to the dark sorcery sect and told her to hide in this room, assuring her that someone would bring the treasure to her. Soon, the dark sorcery sect was completely destroyed, watching the set being destroyed under his watch. A weakened Zhou Chongshan is in utter disbelief. He's extremely unwilling to accept this. For such a villain, Yi Feng doesn't hesitate. He orders two candidate members to take him down. But just then, the system alerts that a treasure needed by his second disciple, Yi Ling Xue, is on Zhou Chongshan. Seeing this alert, Yi Feng initially thinks Zhou Chongshan is stealing his disciple's treasure. He orders the candidate members not to kill him, but to give him a good beating first. Zhou Chongshan is numb. Do you have to insult me before I die? Who is your disciple? When did I ever steal anything? But no one gives him a chance to explain. The candidate members start kicking him immediately. You dare to offend our master. You old man. Yi Feng instructs them to beat him severely. The golden armored strong man just watches as a bystander, commenting, this old guy still has some backbone. He won't confess. Yi Feng is furious. He steals my disciple's treasure and won't admit it. In that case, you go over there too. Loosen his bones for him. Yi Feng sends the golden armored strong man to deal with him. The strong man directly swoops and like an angry crow takes flight. After beating him for an hours, Sho Chongshan still doesn't admit it. This attitude even earns Yi Feng's admiration. However, Sho Chongshan isn't refusing to speak, but genuinely doesn't know what Yi Feng is talking about. You didn't even ask me, who exactly is your disciple? Yi Feng says he doesn't know what the treasure is called, but my disciple's name is Yi Ling Xue, the saintess of the Heavenly Secrets Pavilion. Sho Chongshan, with a swollen face like a pig's head, takes out a treasure. This is something I borrowed from the Heavenly Secrets Pavilion, and your disciple came to my place three days ago, just eating and drinking without saying anything. She didn't say a word. I really didn't know anything. He's truly wronged. Chu Hongshan also explains on behalf of Zhou Chongshan. This thing is indeed borrowed by him. However, Yi Feng clearly knows. He was just playing Zhou Chongshan. After all, it's not easy for the candidate members to come out and get some air. It would be a pity not to let them play a bit longer. Zhou Chongshan is also amused and angered. He never thought that one day, a great demon would become a tool for Yi Feng to win people's hearts. Yi Feng is nonchalant. So what? The next second, Zhou Chongshan can't bear it anymore and bursts out with his remaining strength, attacking Yi Feng. Chu Hongshan quickly shields Yi Feng. However, Zhou Chongshan's explosive aura is completely dissipated by a slap from the golden armored strong man. If our master wants you dead, you die. If he doesn't, you better behave. Chu Hongshan is completely baffled. Who am I? Where am I? Why does this world not conform to his understanding? Yi Feng is increasingly satisfied with the golden armored strong man and asks if he has a name. The strong man says he doesn't, as only official divine tycoon's guards are entitled to have one. Yi Feng becomes interested on the spot. Rules are dead. People are alive. From now on, your name is Yi Wan, with the nickname Suave Man. You're the first one I've named. Don't let me down. Upon hearing this, the golden armored strong man is stunned, then quickly kneels in gratitude. Thank you, my lord, for naming me. Yi Wan will not let you down. With things nearly settled, they decide to kill Zhou Chongshan and return. Yi Wan, you stay. Come with me to return the treasure to Yi Ling Xue. Meanwhile, in the guest room, Zhou Tong listens carefully to the outside sounds, but finds it completely silent. Has the dark sorcery sect really been wiped out? Yi Ling Xue, however, is surprised. Older Zhou, behind you, it's Yi Wan's arrival. He swiftly uses a memory erasing palm on Zhou Tong, knocking him out. Yi Ling Xue, thinking it's an enemy, prepares to fight. Moments later, Yi Feng appears behind Yi Wan. Yi Ling Xue, have you missed your master? Then he returns the treasure to Yi Ling Xue. Yi Ling Xue happily hugs Yi Feng. Master, you're amazing. Chu Hongshan is baffled again. The saintess of the Heavenly Secrets Pavilion is Yi Feng's disciple, and Yi Feng is Luo Chen Xue's disciple. Yi Feng calls Luo Chen Xue wife, so wouldn't the saintess call Yi Feng husband? He then dismisses these thoughts. Seems like I know too much. Yi Feng also removes his cumbersome golden armor. Yi Ling Xue then asks him if, besides destroying the dark sorcery sect, he has other purposes for coming here. Yi Feng gives an awkward smile, sort of. It's actually a mission issued by the system. I had to complete it. Yi Ling Xue interprets this as the dark sorcery sect messing up his grand plan, then praises the karma Dao patterns Yi Feng gave her as powerful, believing that with them, she could eventually control the Heavenly Secrets Pavilion. Yi Feng is left speechless. This second disciple is great in everything, but just as too strong of an imagination. Suddenly, Yi Feng notices Chu Hongshan writing something. Chu Hongshan looks a bit embarrassed. Young Master Yi, don't worry. Even though I know a lot, I will absolutely keep my mouth shut. If I speak, just let the one-armed
armed man chop me into pieces. Yi Feng is speechless. Why does everyone like to imagine so much? Well then, I hope old Chu, you remember what you just said. Otherwise, you're responsible for the consequences. Chu Hongshan is relieved that he reacted quickly. Good thing he didn't care about the while I was writing, or I would have really been in danger. At this moment, Yi Feng looks at the unconscious Zhou Tong. Yi Ling Xue, how are you going to explain this to him later? Yi Ling Xue tells Yi Feng not to worry. She has her own way to explain to older Zhou, since she can handle it. Yi Feng doesn't bother to intervene. Finally, he bestows upon Yi Ling Xue the two sect functions that he didn't give her last time. Now it's time to say goodbye. Yi Feng calls Elder Chu to leave. Then he looks at the rewards for this mission, receiving 300,000 spendthrift points and the Thousand Souls Bloodlust Banner. This is a special magical spiritual artifact, sealing thousands of evil spirits capable of soul attacks. The holder can feed it with their own blood to strengthen it. The stronger the blood, the faster the evil spirits grow. It's a growth type special spiritual artifact. Yi Feng is amazed. This thing is really too strong, and shouldn't it be for a great demon to use? If I bring it to celestial heights, maybe it could even advance to the demonic immortal weapon level, but it's a bit troublesome to keep using my own blood. However, he is reprimanded by the system. Can't you be a bit more ambitious? Do you still want to possess such trash? Yi Feng is frustrated. I don't have any good stuff. Can I just covet this junk? The system reassures him. Don't worry. Although it's a bit poor at the beginning, with the system here, it can completely replace these rewards. Your life will slowly get better. Yi Feng is speechless. Is the system offering me a pie in the sky? The system also thoughtfully gives Yi Feng a new reward. The destruction god eye. Close the eye and all things live. Open it and all things perish. Can be used once a day. Yi Feng, while accepting the reward, praises the system for finally doing something humane. Then he goes outside, ready to test the effect on the mountain in front of him. The destruction god eye opens. A shocking aura slowly awakening. The next second, a mysterious and unfathomable force heads towards the mountain. From Chu Hongshan's perspective, Yi Feng looks like a crazy, blinking fool. Yi Feng asks him if he didn't see the power just now. Chu Hongshan is bewildered. I didn't see anything. Then he looks towards the mountain, only to find that the mountain that once stood there has now completely vanished without a trace. Chu Hongshan exclaims, how did the mountain disappear? Yi Feng suggests not to discuss the vanished mountain for now. Elder Chu, you've had a hard journey. This Thousand Souls Bloodlust banner is for you. It's a growth type spiritual artifact, useful even in celestial heights. Chu Hongshan raises a concern. Doesn't this make me a demonic cultivator? Yi Feng reassures him. Don't worry, the spirits sealed inside are all heinous demons. Just feed them with your blood daily, and their strength will keep increasing. Learning that the sealed spirits are major demons, Chu Hongshan feels relieved. Yi Feng then sends Chu Hongshan away, telling him to return to his sect while he has other matters to handle. Meanwhile, inside the main hall of the Sunlit Sect, the sect leader Chen Jing Feng asks his disciple if everything is ready. The disciple confirms that all cultivation resources will be sent to the demon suppressing cave that night. Hearing this, Chen Jing Feng laughs heartily. After planning for a hundred years, the day has finally come for the ancient demon ancestor to break the seal. On that day, other sects will either submit or be annihilated. No one can stop the rise of the Sunlit Sect. However, a few hours later, Yi Feng successfully sneaks into the Mystic Realm Grand Tournament about to be held by the Sunlit Sect, escorted by Yi Wan. Upon arrival, the system alerts him. Today's spendthrift item refreshes 200 soul spheres. These spheres contain extremely pure soul power, a special item created by cultivators specializing in soul cultivation. Yi Feng doesn't quite understand. Soul cultivators? Does that mean mental attacks? The system explains. Soul cultivators cultivate their own souls, capable of unleashing terrifying mental attacks with mysterious and powerful methods. Soul spheres are extremely important for artifact refiners, alchemists, talisman masters, and array masters, among others. Yi Feng doesn't want to hear all this. Again with the chanting, are you trying to get me to trigger a related plot in the cave? The system admits. Yes. And there's also an unusual power intrusion. The antivirus function has been activated automatically. Yi Feng thinks he should thoroughly study this antivirus function. Inside the cave, an old man named Xiao Chen is muttering to himself. Although I've been sealed for 200 years, being able to refine these 200 soul spheres isn't a loss. At this moment, Yi Feng arrives and asks, What are you counting? Old man, Xiao Chen quickly hides the soul spheres. Surprised, how did you get in here? Yi Feng replies, I just walked in. Xiao Chen is baffled. This place is protected by a formation set by the Golden Will Emperor. How did you get in? Has the formation failed? Seeing Yi Feng walk in nonchalantly, Xiao Chen thinks the formation that trapped him for a hundred years has failed. Excitedly rushes out, muttering, the formation has finally failed. But soon after, with a loud bang, Xiao Chen hits the edge of the formation. It turns out the formation has not failed after all. Yi Feng is also astonished, so that power was confining this old man. Xiao Chen collapses to the ground, crying, how much longer do I have to be trapped here? He can't help but yell out. Yi Feng uses the peering into the heavenly secrets function, ready to find out who this old man is. Soon, the system identifies him as Xiao Chen, the ancient demon ancestor, a peak tribulation crossing realm powerhouse who has survived nine heavenly tribulations. He is a soul cultivator, but 
200 years ago, he offended Ding Yi, a disciple of the Golden Will Emperor, and was sealed in this demon-suppressing cave by the Emperor's avatar, condemned to never ascend to the celestial heights until his death. Seeing that he is a soul cultivator, Yi Feng comes up with various bizarre ideas. He thinks, flaunting soul spheres in front of him should count as spendthrift, right? With a smile, Yi Feng approaches. Elder, are you familiar with soul spheres? Xiao Chen scoffs. Not only do I know, I have quite a few in my hand. Seeing this, Yi Feng pulls out an incredibly large soul sphere. Then, Elder, have you ever seen one this big? Xiao Chen is instantly shocked. What is this? How can there be such a large soul sphere in the mysterious heaven continent? The next second, Yi Feng makes a three-point basketball shot, leaving Xiao Chen dumbfounded. What are you doing? Don't throw it away. But it's too late. With a snap, the soul sphere shatters. Xiao Chen is furious. Are you crazy? Without spiritual energy protection, soul spheres easily break. Do you know how precious such a large soul sphere is? Yi Feng nonchalantly says, no matter how precious, you can't take it out with you. Rather than having the soul sphere as a burial object, it's better to bring some fun. He even fabricates that he was also trapped here for offending Ding Yi. Upon hearing the name Ding Yi, Xiao Chen's expression shows great surprise. You also offended that guy? No wonder you could enter this formation. But that Ding Yi is really useless. It's been 200 years. Hasn't he ascended yet? If I can escape, I will definitely kill him. Yi Feng agrees. Absolutely. Xiao Chen then recalls Yi Feng's earlier statement about soul spheres bringing joy. Yi Feng tells him to watch carefully. I'll only show it once. Then he pulls out a basketball hoop, ready to play basketball with soul spheres. Xiao Chen finds the action awkward, oddly empowering. Yi Feng and Xiao Chen start playing basketball, using soul spheres. The result of the game is Yi Feng winning by a narrow margin. In this way, 200 soul spheres are spent, earning 1,000 spendthrift points and 1,000 soul spheres. Seeing this, Xiao Chen wants to continue playing. Do you, young man, have any more? Yi Feng laughs. No more. Elder, do you have any? Xiao Chen says he naturally has, but his soul spheres are small, not suitable for basketball. Yi Feng grins with an idea. Small ones can be used for playing table tennis. Then the two of them start playing table tennis with Xiao Chen's soul spheres inside the cave. After a few exhilarating hours, both are exhausted. I have to say, Elder, your table tennis skills are really impressive. You even managed to play a spinning ball. But then Xiao Chen becomes gloomy again. It's fun now, but the formation is still there. Xiao Chen then asks Yi Feng if there's still a sect called Sunlit Sect in the outside world. Yi Feng, of course, has heard of it. Isn't it the leading sect of the Mystic Realm Grand Tournament? That Sunlit Sect is really wicked. They tried to harm me before. I casually gave them some benefits, pretended to be the ancient demon ancestor, and promised to protect them after breaking the seal. Then they eagerly started gathering resources for me. Hearing this, Yi Feng gets intrigued. This old man really knows how to play, treating Sunlit Sect like fools. It would be a pity not to recruit such a talent into the sect. Then he asks Xiao Chen, is there really no way to break this formation? Xiao Chen points to a crystal above. That's the formation's core. But forget it. I've tried countless times without success. Hearing this, Yi Feng wants to give it a try, wondering if the destruction god eye can destroy something made by the Celestial Heights Emperor. As Yi Feng activates his destruction god eye, the formation core is instantly destroyed. Xiao Chen is utterly shocked. How did the formation core suddenly disappear? Am I finally going to be free today? Yi Feng then says, Elder, don't you want to go out for a walk? When Xiao Chen steps out of the cave and sees the stars dancing in the sky, he truly realizes he is free. In this moment, Xiao Chen feels as if he's returned to his youth. Young man, you did all this, right? Thank you very much. Yi Feng is a bit confused. Who are you, young man? But as he rubs his eyes, the young man before him disappears, turning back into the scruffy Xiao Chen. Is it a side effect of the destruction god eye, even causing hallucinations? Seems I need some rest. Meanwhile, in the Golden Will Palace in Celestial Heights, the Golden Will Emperor says with interest, didn't expect someone in the lower realm could break his formation. This is really interesting. At the same time, in the mysterious heaven continent soul destroying valley, Ding Yi, a direct disciple of the Golden Will Emperor, also receives this news. Didn't expect that Xiao Chen Gai could escape, but without the Golden Soul Holy Spirit Tree and no mentorship, what can he use to fight me? Meanwhile, in the forest of the secret realm, Xiao Chen is full of regret. If I had known I could get out, I wouldn't have wasted all the soul spheres. And Yi Feng learns from him. The reason why Xiao Chen became enemies with Ding Yi is that he discovered the Golden Soul Holy Spirit tree first, but Ding Yi couldn't compete and thus called for backup. Seeing this, Yi Feng plans to invite Xiao Chen to join a sect. Xiao Chen, now having nowhere else to go and grateful to Yi Feng, agrees without a second thought to join. Of course, as an elder, Yi Feng then asks Xiao Chen, now that we are free, you won't be seeking revenge against Ding Yi, right? And you could ascend to celestial heights anytime now. Xiao Chen says he won't ascend, finding the mysterious heaven continent more interesting. Mainly, he fears being caught by the Golden Will Emperor, which would mean a more miserable death than just laying low. Yi Feng, resigned. Mind. You really are lacking ambition. Then Yi Feng excitedly asks the system. Now that Xiao Chen has joined the Star Soul Sect as an elder, and given his formidable strength, it wouldn't be too much to give him a million low-grade spiritual crystals as a welcome gift, right? The system agrees, stating it falls within the spendthrift 
range. Then Yi Feng happily takes out the spiritual crystals and hands them to Xiao Chen. Elder Xiao, since you've joined our sect, and I, as the direct disciple of the sect master, naturally should offer a welcome gift. Here are one million low-grade spiritual crystals. I hope you won't find them too little. Xiao Chen is completely stunned upon hearing this. Has the economic system of the mysterious heaven continent collapsed over these 200 years? Yi Feng, speechless. Shouldn't you first doubt whether I have money? However, Xiao Chen doesn't accept the welcome gift, thinking and then using his habit of being free and unconstrained as a reason to refuse Yi Feng. He doesn't want to join anymore. The various peculiarities about Yi Feng make him suspect that Yi Feng might have conflicts with the Golden Will Emperor. Seeing Xiao Chen turning to leave, Yi Feng can only pull out his trump card, taking out the soul sphere and saying, Elder, if you don't agree, I'll have to give these hundred soul spheres to someone else, and I'll keep replenishing them after they're used up. Sure enough, this catches Xiao Chen's attention. Upon hearing about the soul spheres, immediately, Xiao Chen's demeanor changes. How could I not agree? I'm already eager to embrace the big family. This triggers a spendthrift action, earning 300 spendthrift points, as well as 100 bottles of soul purifying water. This item can purify impurities in the soul. If purified to the utmost, the soul has a chance to undergo a positive transformation. Yi Feng looks at Xiao Chen upon seeing this effect, thinking this item seems tailor-made for him. Then he asks Xiao Chen, Elder Xiao, if I have something that can purify the soul, what would happen if your soul was purified to the utmost? Xiao Chen, having heard of such treasures, says that if he used it, he would definitely ascend directly. Not even the heavenly emperor could stop that. In light of this, Yi Feng decides not to let Xiao Chen use it. Better to first use it for other members of the sect. The system comments, Host, you're chickening out, aren't you? 